Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. Pleasant morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the day is Tuesday, the 15th day of October in 2024. We had a holiday yesterday here in Belize, and so I took the day off. Mm -hmm. And then I was missing on Friday because I was on Crisio. So it's been a while since I've seen you. I hope all is well where you are. Here in Dangriga, there is gray overcast skies with some thunder clouds looking things in the west and in the far east um in the south and in the far east actually there is just a tinge of clearance in the northeast and the sea is barely barely rolling barely barely moving there is absolute still outside really it's just a beautiful thing to see through my window i know it means that there's some weather out there and some rain and i hope you are keeping dry where you are and that things are looking beautiful for you this morning we're going to kick things off this beautiful tuesday morning with one that is entitled with the lord begin thy tasks let's have a listen with the lord begin thy tasks Jesus will direct it, for his aid and counsel ask, Jesus will perfect it. Every morn with Jesus rise, and when day is ended, in his name then close thine eyes, be to him commanded. Let each day begin with prayer, praise and adoration. On the Lord cast every care, he is thy salvation. Morning, evening, and at night, Jesus will be from the tempter's mind with his presence cheer thee with thy Savior at thy side foes need not among thee in his promises confide and no guilt can harm thee all thy trust to thou repose in the mighty Master, who in wisdom truly knows how to stand disaster. If thy 
task be thus begun with the Savior's blessing. Safely then thy course will run, not thy soul distressing. Good will follow everywhere, while thou here must wander. Thou at last the joy will share in the mansions yonder. Thus, Lord Jesus, every task be to thee commanded. May thy will be done, I ask, until life is ended. Jesus, in thy name begun, be the day's endeavor. Grant that it may well be done, to thy praise forever. That one there entitled, With the Lord Begin Thy Task, sung first by the Lutheran Quartet. Let's continue then getting our words here upon screen this morning. Let's see if I could make that happen here in three, two, and one. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for such the Father seeks to worship him. Words from John chapter 4 verse 23. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35 and we are using versicle 3. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our prayer of intent. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of our goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle de Venite, which is based on Psalm 95, verses 1 through to 8. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 34. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things, perhaps, that might have been unkind even to our very selves. For those times and for those moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honour and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in our goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms number 5 and 6. Let's have a listen. Psalm 5 
Give ear to my word, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken to my cry for help, my King and my God. For I make my prayer to you. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. Early in the morning, I make my appeal and watch for you. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness. And evil cannot dwell with you. Braggards cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those who work wickedness. You destroy those who speak lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful, O oh Lord, you are poor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will go into your house. I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness, because of those who lie in wait for me. Make your way straight before me, for there is no truth in their mouth. There is destruction in their heart. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Declare them guilty, O God. Let them fall because of their evil schemes. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out. For they have rebelled against you. But all who take refuge in you will be glad. They will sing out their joy forever. You shall shelter them so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. You will defend them with your favor as with a shield. Psalm 6 Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. Have pity on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are racked. My spirit shakes with terror. How long, O oh Lord, how long? Turn, O oh Lord, and deliver me. Save me for your mercy's sake. For in death, no one remembers you. And who will give you thanks in the grave? I grow weary because of my groaning. Every night I drench my bed and flood my couch with tears. My eyes are wasted with grief and worn away because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all evildoers. For the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be confounded and quick with fear. They shall turn back and suddenly be put to shame. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second canticle for this morning is canticle number 10, the Song of Isaiah, based on Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 through to 11. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 
For as rain and snow falls from the heaven and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. But it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Bible lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 8 verse 42 to 56. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 8, reading verses 42 to 56. Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Just then there came a man named Jairus, a leader of the synagogue. He fell at Jesus' feet and began and begged him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about 12 years old. Who was dying. As he went, the crowd pressed on him. Now there was a woman who had suffered, who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years, and though she had spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure her. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his clothes, and immediately her hemorrhage stopped. Then Jesus asked, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowd surrounds you and press in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I noticed that power had gone out from me. When the woman saw that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him, she declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any longer. When Jesus heard this, he replied, Do not fear. Only believe, and she will be saved. When he came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him, except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. They were all weeping and wailing for her, but he said, do not weep, for she is not dead but asleep. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and called out, Child, get up. Her spirit returned, and she got up at once. Then he directed them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astounded, but he ordered them to tell no one what had happened. The Word of the Lord Thanks be to God. If you would be so kind as to give me a couple of seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading, a slightly lengthy one here. This one is 16 verses long, but it's two instances of healing and the word should be up on your screen by now. Now, we would have stopped the last time we were together towards the ending of Luke chapter 7 because we missed several days of Bible study with my being away for Christio. And what a blessed spirit-filled time that was. But the beginning of Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through to 3, talks about the women who ministered to Jesus, yes? And it tells us about Mary Magdalene and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stewart. Um, Chusa was Herod Stewart. It talks about Susanna and his mother who were all day minister, all there ministering to him. And it is telling us about the various types of people and their contribution to Jesus' ministry. And this is important because the first half of chapter 8 is about the parables of the soil. And the parables of the soil is about the seeds that fell on the various type of soil. And the thing to remember there is that the seed is the seed and it doesn't change. The sower is the sower and that doesn't change. But the soil varies and to look at and examine what type of soil we have been, are, or hope to be and what needs to be done to repair that. And in the parable of the sower, while the story is given, the purpose behind it is also given. So if you get a chance to read the beginning 
of Luke chapter 8. Kindly do that indeed. And after the, the parable of the sower, what comes next in chapter 8 is the caution of those who, um, not the caution, but the responsibility of those who receive the word. You see, those who receive the word of God are responsible to expose it and to publish the truth. That is the word of God. And so verse 16 through to about 1920 tells us about the lamp that should not be put under a bed, but to be set on a lampstand. And to remember that, of course, those who receive the word become accountable. And we have to take care that once we hear it and understand it, we need to be able to shine the word of God to those we come in contact to. And that is because we know that by hearing Jesus' word, obeying his word is what is supposed to come next. And then in the middle of chapter 8, what we find is Jesus calming the storm, verse 22 to 23, the storm on the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. And of course, Jesus falls asleep in that one. And it's the master we are perishing and Jesus wake up and then shows his authority over nature. All right. Now they had seen him heal before and now he's showing authority over nature. So what Jesus is doing is Jesus is not necessarily showing off. He's saying, showing off. He ain't never braggart like that. He's a very humble being. But what Jesus is doing is Jesus is exhibiting for all to see the levels of authority that he has that comes to him through his relationship with God the Father. So he has healed people and he has calmed the storm and then the next step in verse 26 to 29 is he will have authority over demons because there in verse 26 to 39, 29, he is going to drive the demons from a possessed man, right? And this is, of course, now, I mean, this is, this is big. He heals, yeah? He calms the storm. So he has power over illness. He has power over nature. He has power over demons. What is it that this guy does not have power over? Hmm. Well, as we see in today's reading, which is where we are, verse 42 to 56, yeah? Um, what we see now is that even over life and death itself, Jesus is able to exercise authority. Hmm? Now, the reaction of the people after he delivered the demoniac in the, in, that was filled with legion, yeah? They... they <laughs> The people begged him, you know. The people begged him, go away from we. Go away from us. Because this is an authority that we can't deal with. And so he went on his way and he was proclaiming throughout the great city, you know what? The things, the things that were happening were around him. And then as he's leaving from that place, because they chased him away, as he's leaving from that place, Jairus comes to him. And Jairus was not just anybody, but Interesting to notice that here we are talking about Jesus returning now to Galilee. So he is driven away from where he was when he casted out the demons out of the man. Yeah. From where he was when he calms the storm. And when he gets to Galilee, the news of him reaches ahead of him. And he leaves the Gentile region around the Sea of Galilee and he goes back. You know. And he's now returned to Jewish towns on the other side. And there's a large crowd waiting for him because they have all heard about him and in the midst of this large crowd is a ruler of the synagogue somewhat like a modern day pastor so he's responsible for managing both the spiritual and the business affair of the synagogue and he comes to Jesus in desperation desperation because we know it's desperation because it says he falls down at Jesus' feet and begs because his daughter was dying now as as a synagogue ruler this man was a lay official responsible for supervising the buildings and the arranging of services, you know. So he would be the Jewish equivalent to the centurion that we heard in Luke 7. Remember the centurion who came to ask for healing for his servant. And Jesus didn't even go to the centurion's house to heal the servant. He simply pronounced him to be healed, right? And it's a similar situation. But in this event, the centurion had said to Jesus, don't come because I am not worried that you come to my house. And Jairus begs Jesus now, come to my house, please. Because my daughter is sick. So he is not as, he's showing faith, but not as much faith as the centurion. He's showing faith in that he believed that Jesus can heal his child, but not as much faith that he believes that Jesus could do it from where he is. The centurion's words were, don't come. And Jairus' begging is, please come. And we understand because 
In in the case of the centurion, it was a servant that was important to him, but this is Jairus' one and only daughter, and she was dying. And he decides he will go with Jairus, and they are traveling along, but the multitudes are all around him, and people are pressing upon him. Yeah? People are pressing upon him, and the crowds pressing upon him, almost suffocating, really. Hmm? The Greek word that he used, the root word, uh, in Greek, it's, it's like the word, the same word for describing the choking of a seed by weeds. Yes? So they're pressing upon him heavily and he's pushing his way through to try to get to Jairus' house. And it shows us, it is written for us there, to show the pace at which he's going. He can't move fast because he has to move along with this crowd that is pressing against him, trying to get to him. And in the middle of this crowd, there's a woman who should not be there. She should not be there. She is having an issue of blood. She is hemorrhaging. Hmm? And this woman was in a desperate condition. Her bleeding made her ceremonially and socially unclean. And to have this burden to be living under for 12 years. So ceremonially, she couldn't participate in anything in terms of religious activities. And socially, she was unclean and shouldn't be around people because anybody who touched somebody with, an, with a blood issue became unclean and had to go through several days of cleaning before they were acceptable again. According to the Jewish idea of the time, if this woman touched anybody, she would impart her uncleanliness on them. And this uncleanliness would not allow them to be a part of any aspect of Israel's worship. And that's Levitical law, chapter 15 in Leviticus, I think. Now, the reading tells us that she had spent all her livelihood on physician and could not be healed. So it's not that the woman was not trying. She went to the doctors to get better, but the reading tells us she only got worse and became poorer. Now, Luke is said to be a physician. So for the fact that Luke is said to be a physician, a physician would know how doctor bills could take up all you have. So Luke telling us that this woman has been going to doctor for 12 years and now was broke is something that he would be speaking from with some authority. You know? And, and, the ancient rabbis had many different formulas to help a woman who was hemorrhaging. And it is written, yes, there was one rabbi, Rabbi Jochanan, jo Jochanan, I think his name was, you know, the, he would, the gum of Alexandria, alum, um, corcus hortentis, the weight of a, of a zuzi each, and they would crush them together in wine, and the woman would have to drink it, and then, you know, different things. But you know what? none of it worked none of it worked and i can't imagine being afflicted and shunned for 12 years and it, it made me think of when a soul is sick today hmm? we go to different doctors that spend a great deal of time and money are not healed because a sick soul could go to a doctor for entertainment and not find cure because a sick soul can only be healed by a soul doctor and only Dr. Jesus could do that. Hmm? No self-help doctor, no success doctor, no pleasure doctor, no religious doctor per se. Only Dr. Jesus can heal some things. <laughs> I like that, Dr. Jesus. And this woman is in the crowd. She knows she's not supposed to be there. She's breaking all the rules to get to Jesus. But she is as desperate as Jairus. And she pushes through the crowd. And, and because her condition was embarrassing and she was ceremonial, un, ceremonially unclean, she would be condemned for touching Jesus, for even being in the pressing crowd where other people are touching her. So she wanted to do it secretly. She knew she couldn't openly ask Jesus to be healed in the midst of this crowd because she would then be the, reprimanded and even stoned. And, and so the woman, with great faith, thinking there was power in the hem of his garment, yeah, simply wanted to reach the hedge to touch it and that's great faith now jewish men yes jewish men wore a like a wrap or an outer garment and it had tassels in the corners of the outer garment and it is believed that this woman simply touched one of these tassels and in touching the tassel great element of faith that there was yeah there's no way that it says in the Bible that Jesus had healed somebody this way before. But she touches the tassel and immediately the 12 years of disease and discomfort 
and bleeding comes to an end. Hmm? And despite super cisterns, despite the, 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 the biblical laws that she was breaking, she believed in the healing power of Jesus to the point that his garment and contact with his garment could heal her. And it did. According to the thinking of Jesus' day, when this unclean woman touched Jesus, it would have made Jesus unclean. But because of the nature of Jesus and the power of God, that wasn't how it worked. When she touched Jesus' garment, she didn't make Jesus unclean. His cleanliness made her whole. Hmm? And that's a powerful thing to remember. When we come to Jesus with our sins, we need to recognize that there is nothing in our sins that could take away from the majesty that he is. When we take our sins and lay it upon him, it doesn't make him a sinner. It makes us sinless, having submitted to him what our sins were. And when the woman touched Jesus, even the fringe of his clothes, you know, if you're dressed brushed against somebody, you won't necessarily feel it, depending on the wideness of your skirt. Yes? But Jesus felt it. Who touched me? Jesus said. And everybody said, well, not me. I mean, and Peter said, you know what? This is a great crowd. They didn't understand as Jesus was trying to explain it, a casual touch and brushing against in a crowd and the reaching out in faith to touch him that had come for this woman. And we can imagine someone who, because of the pressing crowd, would bump against Jesus, you know? When the woman's miracle was revealed, however, they might say, I bump into Jesus, I touch him, I was not healed. But there was a huge difference between bumping into Jesus and reaching out to touch him in faith. <laughs> And it made me think, people could come to church all the time and bump into Jesus and walk out exactly how they are walking, Because they didn't come reaching out in faith to touch him. They came because it's what we do on a Sunday. They came because somebody bring them, they got no choice. And they come and they bump into Jesus and it has no effect. But when you come to Jesus reaching out to touch him in faith, Looking for healing. When you make that contact. Undeniable. Undeniable. And, and it's interesting because it tells us, it shows us that not every contact with Christ saves or heals. You know? What does is your determination, your personal resolute belief that touching him will heal you. And Jesus said, somebody touch me. Not the bumping in the crowd. Somebody touched me because I felt power leave from me. And when the woman was immediately healed, Jesus felt something happen. He had a sense that somebody had just been healed. I would imagine this is like, you know when you catch the heebie-jeebies and you feel uh, this, this shiver for no reason? I would imagine maybe it felt something like that. Why he could tell. And when the woman realized that she couldn't hide it, she had to come forward. She knew that Jesus knew who she was at that point. Because even if nobody else had recognized that she had touched him, he did. And she couldn't hide that. And so she came forward. And it must have been embarrassing for her. But Jesus' purpose of bring, calling her out was not to embarrass her, but to bless her. So when the woman saw that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling and fall down before him and declared in the presence of all the people, Why? And I am sure in declaring that, people must have gone, ah, oh, uh -huh, and judged. Jesus' response, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Jesus called her forward, not to embarrass her, but so that she could absolutely know that she was healed. She didn't have to have a doubt because now the healer had proclaimed it to her. The woman had an ailment that no one could see. And that made her a public outcast. And it might sound suspicious to many if she just announced that she was healed. They would think that she just made it up. And since asking her for proof would not be the thing to do, Jesus called her forward so others could absolutely know that she was restored. Jesus did it so that she would know why she was healed. Your faith has made you well. And while Jesus is proclaiming this healing, I mean, 
I could imagine what Jairus is feeling. He's thinking, my child is dying and we're wasting time on this woman, perhaps. Or he could possibly have been thinking, you see this? This woman, faith, heal her. And he could have encouraged him. Come now, since you could heal, let's go. Hmm? And it's interesting that Jesus calls the woman daughter in front of Jairus, whose daughter is dying. But in the midst of all of it, someone says to Jairus, stop, trouble the master. And poor Jairus, during all of this, his daughter sits ill at home, her life slipping away. Hmm? <laughs> God sometimes might seem slow to us, but he's never later. Huh? And the news come, your daughter is dead. Stop trouble the master. And we could imagine how Jairus' heart must have sunk when he heard this. He must have thought, I knew that this woman was taking too long. I knew Jesus shouldn't have wasted time on this silly woman. And now my situation is beyond repair because my child is dead. But when Jesus hears the news, he gives Jairus Two things to do. First, he tells Jairus, do not fear. And second, he tells him, only believe and she will be saved. And it sounds almost cruel for Jesus to say, do not be afraid to a man who just has been told his daughter has died. But Jesus knew that fear and faith don't go together. Before Jairus could really trust Jesus, he had to decide to put away his fear. Because fear and faith don't go together. So do not be afraid, he says to him. Only believe and hold on to your faith. Don't try to believe and be afraid at the same time. Don't try to believe and figure it all out. Don't try to believe and try to make sense of the delay. Instead, only believe. Don't try to justify anything. Just believe. Only believe and she will be made well. The only thing Jairus had to believe in was Jesus' word. Everything and everyone else told him that his daughter was gone forever. She is dead. All he had to hold on to was Jesus' word. And they get to Jairus' house and the people are wailing and mourning and crying. This was the customary and there were even hired professional mourners to add to the atmosphere of grief and pain and death. And the fact that these people were already called proves that the girl was dead, dead, dead. Hmm? And it shows us that their professional mourners grieve superficially. Because when Jesus saw them weeping, Jesus said, don't cry, for she's not dead, she's only sleeping. And their grief immediately turned to scornful laughter of ridicule towards Jesus. And you know what? Jesus was often ridiculed and mocked, you know. But it didn't stay that way. Because he goes into the room with just a select few, the mother, the father, and three of his disciples. And he brings the child forth. He raises the child. The spirit returns to her. Jesus wasn't out of touch with reality when he said she's not dead but sleeping. He wasn't playing make-believe or pretending. He knew he had a higher reality, a spiritual reality that was more powerful than death itself. And that is what he showed. He showed authority over sickness. He showed authority over demons. He showed authority over nature, and now he shows authority even over death. And to show that she was alive, the first command he gives to them, after bringing the child back to life, is give her something to eat. Because dead people and spirit don't need food. One of the characteristics of living things is they must eat. And everybody in the room was astonished. And then Jesus does something that baffles me and this is where I'll stop. He orders the five in the room to not tell anyone what had happened. But the mourners and the grievers and the people outside who saw the child dead, I am sure he realized he has no control, even if he tells them to tell no one. People in that crowd are going to spread the news that this child was dead but brought back to life. And that's where the story ends for today. Though she was raised to life by a miracle, she was not preserved by a miracle. She needed to eat. And the parents were astonished. She did, Jesus didn't fail Jairus. He didn't fail the woman who needed healing. He served both of them. He might have stretched Jairus' faith a little extra. Hmm? 
but the miracle now would be that this news does not break out and it did tomorrow we will continue to look at what happens next as the news of jesus begins to spread but for now the message exercise your faith in order to reduce your fear amen let us continue with the profession of our faith in the words of the apostles creed Together we say, I believe in God, Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. We put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Our first collet for this morning is the collet for Pentecost, chapter 23. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray a call it for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the world cycle of prayer for this morning, we pray for the people of Micronesia. And in our ecumenical cycle of prayer, we pray for our sisters and brothers who are members of the Toraja Church. And now let us turn to our own prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday on Sunday was Mr. Alvin Miranda. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Miss Eola Brookings, Miss Jeanette Brooks, Miss Dorothy Francisco, Mr. Jason Close, and Miss Beverly Somerville. Celebrating a birthday today is Miss Tanya Levy. And in memoria, celebrating a birthday today would have been Miss Cynthia Armstrong. May she continue to rest in peace. To those celebrating birthdays, we pray that Almighty God will grant you blessings, not just for this birthday, but for all your days ahead. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Monica, Miss Margaret, Miss Betty, Miss Agnes, Miss Priscilla. Miss Eileen, Miss Sylvia, Miss Marina, Miss Martha, Miss Chanel, and Miss Joyce. We pray for Miss Pauline, Miss Des, Miss Janice, Miss Marva, Miss Loretta, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Barbara, Miss Gloria, Miss Dylan, Miss Aislinn, and Miss Rose. We pray for Miss Grace, Miss Justine, Miss Alma, Miss Ruby, Miss Celestina, Miss Emma, Miss Arlette, Miss Delvery, 
Miss Jessica, Miss Marlene, Miss Lisa, Miss Sabine, we pray for Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Soila, Miss Barry, Miss Elizabeth, Miss Amelia, Miss Yolanda, Miss Althea, Miss Lorraine, Miss LaShawn, Miss Rosita, Miss Geraldine. We pray for Miss Myrtle, Miss Sonia, Miss Matilda, Miss Felicia, Miss Salome, Miss Glenda, Miss Teresa, Miss Valencia, Miss Marie, Miss Nalita, Miss Molly, Miss Amy, Miss Janet, Miss Marley, Miss Toya, Miss Mary, Miss Kim, and Miss Ellen. We continue to remember and pray for Miss Ruth, Miss Aisha, Miss Marilyn, Miss Carolyn, Miss Jasmine, Miss Amir, Miss Nina, Miss Leonore, Miss Tanya, Miss Robin, Miss Jean, Miss Camille. Miss Deisha, Miss Marie W, Miss Kieran, Miss Choice, Miss Marcia, Miss Ismay, Miss Joan, Miss Ulisse, Miss Licha T, Miss Rita, Miss Louise, Miss Fiona, Miss Caroline, Miss Gretel, Miss Kelly, Miss Valina, Reverend Tiloda, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Miss Nadia, Miss Eleanor, Miss Lynette, Miss Natalie, Miss Temporine, Miss Charlene, Miss Shen Nadine, Reverend Linda, Miss Dominic, Miss Tanisha, Miss Debbie, Miss Bernadine, Miss Sandra, Miss Catherine, Miss Sheila, Miss Irene, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Julianne, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Maisie, Miss Tracy, Miss Timothy, Miss Hilda, Miss Patricia, Miss Lauren, Miss Megan, Miss Tessa, Miss Tillis, Miss Marlene, Miss Shanice, Miss Kimberly, Miss Susan, and Miss Dorothy B. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenneth, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey. Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Kemuel, Mr. Ewart, Mr. Diane, Mr. Ian, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Charles, Mr. Dion, Mr. Freddie, Mr. Costa, Mr. Finia, Mr. Delta. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismail, Mr. Clement, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Carlos, Mr. Eon, Mr. Salvador, Mr. Jean, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Park. Mr. Lindon, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Dion, Mr. Pablo, Father Constancio, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Donald, Sir Colvin, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Dennis, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Ambrose, Mr. Peter H., and Mr. Hebert. We continue to remember and pray for Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Mr. J. Marr, Mr. James, Father Mark, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Chris, Mr. Trevor, Mr. Jamil. We remember and pray. Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Mr. Albert, Mr. Warren, Mr. Richard, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Omar, Mr. Franz, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kieran, Mr. Devin, Mr. Anigi, Mr. Ivan, Mr. Ted, Mr. Paul, Bishop Curry, Mr. Maxwell, and Bishop Wright. We continue to remember and pray for all those who are infirm, as well as those who care for the infirm in at-home situations or in institutions, both public and private. We pray for the protection and the enablement of all our medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We pray especially for those persons who are infirmed or care for others who, for whatever reason, cannot pray for themselves. We pray for them, praying to God, our Heavenly Father, give you of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs. That those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers for this morning, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We pray for the family of Mr. Oscar Ramirez, the family of Mr. Peter Williams, the family of Mr. Murphy Norales, the family of Miss Glenis Hoare, the family of Miss Shirley Phillips, the family of Mr. Gilbert Domingo, the family of Miss Haley Reed. We continue to pray for the family of Mr. Ricardo Ward, the family of Mr. Daniel Rodriguez, the family of Mr. Ivan Ramos. We continue to remember and pray for the family of Mr. Victor Marin, the family of Ms. Anne Cooper, the family of Ms. Marge Messiah, and the family of Mr. Hector Neal. For all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we continue to pray with Almighty God. We grant you comfort during this time of bereavement we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We pray for our students who are studying overseas. We pray for our loved ones who are in the military, who are posted out district and overseas as well. We continue to pray for the most vulnerable in our society, 
for the poor, the needy, the elderly, the homeless persons in hospice situations, those living in situations of abuse, those battling with ailments such as lupus, MS, HIV, and AIDS, cancers of their various stages and kinds, those dealing with mental health challenges, and those dealing with substance abuse issues and their related ailments. In, a, in our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for our security forces, for the government, for the churches, for the private sector, for all persons in positions of public trust and authority, for all non-governmental organizations involved in any form of humanitarian aid. We pray for the members of the international community, those affected by the effects of war and civil unrest, those under the threat of violence, those who are displaced and trying to piece their lives together, those who would have lost loved ones as a result of war and civil unrest. We pray for those who have been affected by natural disasters, those who recently were in the paths of any type of natural disaster, those in their various stages of recovery, those grieving the life loss of loved ones. As we pray for the international community, we pray for ourselves and our region, for protection against the threat of war and civil unrest, and for protection against the ravages of natural disasters. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God, hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions this morning by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. And we continue to pray for all of your intentions listed in our chat. I unfortunately don't get to see the chat while I'm broadcasting, but I am sure there are prayers in there and that you are praying for each other. And I thank you so much for doing that. I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Today is Tuesday. So following this broadcast, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. to close off the day. We invite you to join us for any or all of these services as you are available. And if you miss it at its scheduled time, you could always revisit the Facebook pages of the churches in the diocese in order to be able to catch a repeat of those services. I want to thank you so much for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to wrap up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final theme. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons in the power of your Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to wrap up this beautiful Tuesday morning. Still gray outside, getting brighter, but still gray. We're going to wrap up this morning with this one entitled, Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God has ready for those who love him. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless. Bye for now.
Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The Lord just brought me through the night 